Okay guys, welcome to another episode of Andy Outdoors. It's been a while since I posted. And today I've just acquired um, some, I wouldn't say camping rights, but I've just asked uh, about camping up here. Sorry about the kids in the background, but we're going all the way somewhere along there. And it's a fair trek. This is Corley Fall in Welch. There's a quarry over the other side, just past that little house there. You can just see the house there, the roof of it. So we're going up there. Well, I'm going up there, should I say. Um, just above the village of Dizeth. Okay guys, so um, I'm just following mainly a, a footpath through the woods. This bit, of the, this bit of the map is fairly easy to navigate. <coughs> like I say, it's newly, uh, newly acquired land as of today, as of, as of filming. And uh, there should be some spectacular views from the top. Uh, a little bit more about later on in the video hopefully a little bit more about uh, acquiring access to land for wild camping um, hopefully that'll give you a little bit of insight in, of how I do things um, so I'm just going to follow the path now through the woods it's a nice day it's quite warm been intermittent, sh intermittent showers all through the day. Um, it's threatening a thunderstorm later on, so uh, we'll see how things pan out. Really, but it's a bit of a climb through the woods, as you can see. There's the footpath. Doesn't look very much on the video, but when you're carrying 20 kilos on your rucksack, you can go into the equipment a bit more later on when you're carrying 20 kilos and it's a mud surface you're wa walking on things become a little bit more difficult now see it's rising all the time looks very gentle on the uh, on the video but believe me it's not so uh, I'll catch you in a bit guys right okay guys so I am following Let's get this here. I'm following that little bit of woodland there. This is where I aim to camp. There's a big quarry in this area. This is what I've got access to. You know, this, this bit here. Sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> use the camera to look at where the pens. So I've got this bit here. Um, so obviously there's no footpaths there's one little footpath there, but apart from that we've got some kind of master station. I do know that station, so I've seen it before. So I need to navigate my way along here and hopefully I'll be able to show you that using a compass and the blue lines that are on the map, the grid, the grid lines. So I'm just walking through this little bit of woodland now till we meet the uh, B road. Okay guys, just a quick one. This, this little plant, three leaf clover, as it's sometimes called, is actually sorrel. Let's see if I can get some. Very hard looking at the camera, trying to pick it. Let's get rid of the grass. There you go. That's sorrel, that's edible, quite a long stem and it tastes a 
very much like apple peel. You can tell how much sweat's coming off me. That was a bit of a hike that was, through them woods. Anyway, it's opening up a little bit now. I haven't found the main road yet. But, I mean, you can't even see the mountain where I'm going. It's just shrubbery everywhere. Okay guys, so the, ra the road runs down that way. I don't know if you just saw that car pass by. And there's a, a stile there, uh, not a stile, a gate, kissing gate. And then our path runs up there. Now as you can see, if I can point with the camera, our path runs up there. So if I can point on the map, <coughs> let me find my pencil. focus now right okay so we're I'm at this point just there so I've just walked through that footpath and that one there veers off now it's got a black line there that suggests there's some kind of boundary the road like I say is just down there which is that road over there can't really see it it's under the hedgerows and what have you so, I've got to find my way up onto this mountain here. I know that I'm probably about there at the moment because the gate's there and that footpath relates on the land up there. Okay, one thing that I did fail to point out is the contour lines. Now, some of you know and some of you don't, but the closer these brown lines are together, the steeper it is. So as you can see, just here, they are very close together, which means it's extremely steep. And that brown, almost um, dotted line there means that there's a crag edge. So I know that this little bit that I'm just about to do is moderately steep. I've just come through the woodland there following the contour line and that was steep enough. So now I'm going to be climbing um, almost 90 degrees to the road. So I'm going to take a compass bearing just yet until I lose the path. Um, so I know it's going to be pretty hard work going up these contours. Okay folks, so what I was wearing was my Gore-Tex jacket with a fleece underneath with a high wick shirt. I've taken the fleece off, I'm working in layers. It's going to get steeper, so I'm going to be sweating more. But there is a little bit of drizzle, a bit of uh, a little bit of showers coming on, so I've decided to keep this on for the time being. I could do it just in this, but I don't know if the camera can pick up, but there's black clouds coming in over there. So I don't want to get caught out basically, so I'm just going to uh, use my jacket. If I get too hot while I'm climbing, I'll strip another layer off and then put it on if it really does downpour. So without further ado, let's try and do these contours. Okay, so these are the, so steep it is. It's continually rising. That's where I've come from. Last bit of video was done way down there and that's what 50 meters if that so you can see how steep the trains come in the beginners come or the contour lines on the map so we'll try and find the boundary and then we'll try and get some kind of landmark that we can use to start navigating with right, okay guys so the last video was just made just the other side of this big bush here and already the landscapes beginning to open up so you can appreciate the contour lines on the map I'm just going to follow the path up here now until I reach the boundary line or the boundary on the map it could be a, like I say it could be a fence could be a brick wall could be a stone wall okay so this is gauze very young gauze at that these flowers you can eat, they're edible. 
tastes a little bit like grass as you would expect a little bit acidity um, back in the day years ago they used to feed this to animals it used to be animal fodder it tastes alright to me you can also see down there some brambles coming through so it just goes to show in this, at this time of the year there is plenty of edibles about we found uh, within I don't know 200 meters we found sorrel gauze and brambles all right the brambles aren't ready for eating yet but the flowers you could probably eat so uh, yeah we'll just uh, continue on up there I think right well I've just come a little bit off the path there and just noticed this sign that's my path there I just noticed this what does it say private property keep out but yet they've been kind enough to give us a a stale doesn't make sense best things to do folks when it's steep like this and muddy take your time I'd rather uh, come down alive or come down without a sprained wrist or ankle or something even worse something broken just take your time there's no race and always remember when you're at the top you're only halfway there because you've got to come down again okay so i can see the mast in the distance let me just zoom in on that for a second that mountain behind it is where i'm going up there there's the mast and the boundary was actually a stone wall although you can't see it very well but it does run down there there's a gap in it here I can see a grass track going up here so I'm going to follow that which is not on the map and I presume that the boundary stone wall will continue that way but I won't know that till I'm a bit higher up so that's where I'm at the moment there's the views in the distance so for the time being like I said I'm just going to follow this little bit of a grass track up here now I'm on land where I'm allowed to be so I haven't got to worry about anything really anybody questions me which I doubt they will because there's nothing around here for miles Folks, wow I've just walked literally from down there two minutes walk there's come woods over there here's all the livestock saying hello and it literally is opening out now you can see the sea properly now got real down there so I'm thinking there's the mast there's the mast just there camera's not doing it justice there we go the mast is there I'm thinking of maybe trying to scramble maybe up that way right onto the top I could camp here if I wanted to but um, it's a little bit flat here but we want to see some uh, birds of prey hopefully Whew. you have to be a mountain goat to get up here I'm telling you now, oh, if you can see that post there, that's where I came from 10 minutes ago. And you can see how steep this thing is. It's that steep. I can only see the mass now and not the... Uh, the hut that's next to it so I'm gonna head for that opening there looks like there's some kind of a path going up that way so that's what I'm gonna do again not taking any map readings yet any compass work hopefully I'll do that when I'm at the top okay guys you're not at the top until you're at the top there's another climb there just found the mast and the hut 
this is like within five minutes of me doing my last little cut so there's a little well there's mr sheep over there wondering what's going on doesn't see humans up here very often he's keeping a beady eye on me so we're heading up to that ridge there and hopefully when i get to the top he'll start leveling out a little bit right okay so like i said before just have to excuse the dodgy uh straightness of the camera like i said before you need to know where you are in order to get where you're going so obviously you can see the mast in the middle here that's a good landmark to use on the os map the mast is actually there I want to get into this area here, so I know that I'm walking along the ridge line. I know I'm walking along this because I can actually see on the land all the white limestone. So I know I'm walking roughly in that area. So let's get the mast in focus. There we go. So the mast is is there. The mast is there, and I want to get to a point here. So first of all, what you do? Bear with me folks and I'll bring you in and show you what I do. I'll try and do this the best I can while looking at the camera. So, this is the mast. This is where I want to go. So what I do is I put my compass edge from the mast to the, my direction of travel where I want to go. And I'll draw a line down there near enough it's a bit off it doesn't matter I'm gonna draw another one right so I want to follow the second line so what you do then you see all the blue lines on a map they're called grid lines or grid north I'll try and do this the best I can folks so just bear with me so I hope you can see me lines that I've drawn so right, so what I need to do now is align the compass with grid north, which are the blue lines, these lines. And the way you do that, in the bezel, there's these, this can be turned, you see, there's these lines. So what you need to do is align these lines with north, with your grid north, which is the blue line here. Or any blue line that's why they give you a few of them to play with I can see the camera won't pick it up but probably but I can see a blue line there so I can align my bezel with the blue line so let's just uh, get that somewhere near right the next bit gets a little bit tricky right so basically I want to travel in that direction the direction that the, comp the the line of the compass is showing I've got my grid north lined up with the grid on the map the blue lines on the map now I need to get the needle to north this is map orientation so I need to align that with north sorry about the pause there folks right I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up but there's a little red arrow there that is the direction of travel we need to be traveling in so once that once the bezel the lines in the bezel align with the blue lines on the map as near as damn it hold it flat get the north needle to north and then if I can just hold it and then the red arrow shows me the direction of travel and sure enough if I lift the camera up I'll try and do it the best I can folks it's a bit hard but it's pointing that way kind of and sure enough it's pointing me roughly in that direction I'm saying it roughly it's actually telling me the right way to go but handling the camera, handling the map and a compass and a pencil all at the same time 
is a little bit so let's just have a look at the look so we're aligned with north all the grid bezels are lined up we're aligned with north on the, on the north needle and it's actually telling me to walk in that direction so that's where I'm walking to over there okay guys and girls that's the, uh, the fly sheet put up which is the first one neat thing about this tent is all the pegs has to do with the outside of the tent the outer shell or the fly sheet there's the door you can just make the door out there um, so there's no pegs inside whatsoever they use uh, the inner tent clips in with these things that you get on rucksacks seems to be like the norm normal kind of thing nowadays but so they just clip into them um, I did recently fab seal this uh, I didn't fab seal it, I'm lying. I nick waxed it. I've changed brands, I've gone to nick wax. You can probably just make out here and there where it's still a bit. I should have wiped all that off, but I thought oh, I'll sod it, leave it. Um, so it's a 4,000, uh, 3,000 hydrostatic head, I think, on this one. Let's just have a look, it does say somewhere. Uh, yeah, 3,000 hydrostatic head. There we go. That's the weight of it, 2.4 kilos, and that's the dimensions. It's the Gallic Trek uh, Track 2 tent. It says it's for two men. I'd say two very friendly men could get in here. Maybe one man and his girlfriend at a push, so I've got that bit up anyway. And it's a lovely night tonight. The sun's still up, just setting over there. Okay guys, so that's my 70 litre rucksack in the vestibule area. So let me take you off the tripod. Might be able to see a little bit better. So that's my 70 litre stood there. That's fully laden still. Just the outside of the just the tent that was out on the outside. I put a bit of junk down here, taking my jacket off, my radio, blah blah blah, dry bags, maps. I've filled the pocket up with Compasses, gloves, phone, tobacco, all that kind of thing. It's not pulled the tent side down that much. I'm quite happy with that. So yeah, again, it's away from the edge. And even if it wasn't such the edge, I don't think it'd be a major problem. But it's away from the edge. Quite a, quite a distance really, and it's naturally leaning that way anyway. But um, obviously I'm going to empty it. Empty some of the stuff of it out of it now.
don't get very many views like that when you wake up in the morning. Well guys, <coughs> getting a bit peckish so I think we're going to get breakfast on. What have we got today? I've got my frying pan, so obviously a couple of eggs. Nice little, uh, nice little breakfast. I think it's actually Scottish, it's Scottish breakfast. A couple of mushrooms and my uh, goose fat. Smelling good. Well, the breakfast is served. <coughs> Black pudding, square sausage, mushrooms, normal sausages, I think they're the rain sausage, one of them, and a little bit of scrambled egg on top. Now I've just got my uh, me kettle boiling for a brew. Boys and girls. All that for a pound. A little packs to get from Poundland. Can't beat it. That'll help me get home today. No need to dirty another spoon up, just use my fork. There are the coffees I use, also from Poundland, three in ones. I know quite a lot of you guys use the three in ones. Lovely. Right guys, <laughs> well I've sold a little bit of what I'm going to be my dream on the, um, the third battery, I'll have to finish my breakfast by the way. Um, I'm going to just have a wander down to the quarry edge and see if I can see any of these elusive buzzards. I've heard a couple this morning, very early on, I was awake at about half six. I heard a couple squawking then, but there's a lot of um, crows and jackdaws around, which suggests to me that they're not in the area at the moment. So, um, I'll have a little wander down there and see what we can see. See, there's plenty of jackdaws and crows down there. I've just spooked them. So uh, I'm just going to sit here. I've got behind this quarry and also that rock face in the distance over there. So we'll see uh, see if we can spot any of these elusive uh, buzzards. But with all these crows around, like I say, I don't think. Chances are very good today. Definitely in this area. I've just seen one take off over there, but I wasn't quick enough with the camera. It went into them trees there. <sighs> and 
eating alive here, like flies and stuff. I'm just going to hang around and see if I can um, see if I can catch another shot of one. There's one launching about over there. I'm going to see if I can get it on camera. It is very far away in the distance. I've lost it now. Oh, it's over there. It's too far away. Don't think I'm going to be able to get it, guys. Right guys, um, I hope I caught, hope you could see that on video, there was two buzzards down there. The jackdaws have come back now so it suggests to me that they've moved out of the area. I really hope that I have caught that on film, it would be disappointing if I haven't. Right, um, I'm going to start packing up now. Um, just one quick one that I said I would do last night, yesterday was... Um, where, where getting permission is concerned, um, all I basically do is go and knock on farmers' doors, try and find out um, who actually owns the land or who has the grazing rights on the land, and then ask them. Um, I don't bother ringing people up. I prefer to meet face to face, to face with landowners, so they can see me. They know that I'm not up to any mischief. Um, usually, I start by saying, "Can I just do one night, maybe in in your woods or?" On your on your hill, um, because I'm interested in um, maybe owls, you know, and wildlife. Um, I thought that was another buzzard coming in there, but it's a seagull. Um, yeah, so that's how I basically uh, that's how I gain my permissions. Um, and once you get talking to one landowner, or once you you know make contact with them, you you soon find out from from them and from other people that you knock on the door of um, about who owns what and, and what's what basically um, so I'm not going to go too much into it like I say I just go and knock on doors try and find out who owns who owns the land or who's got you know who's got the right permissions um, so I'm going to pack away now I'm going to call it a wrap it's a nice hot sunny day now the breeze has gone uh, like I say, the jackdaws have come back in the quarry, so it doesn't look like the buzzards are going to make another appearance. As we speak, there flies a seagull over there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we can zoom in. That's right over there now. So anyway, I'm, I may come back here. Um, Again, in the future, Oops, sorry guys, I may come back here in the future um, to have a look again for these, for the buzzards. Um, so, I'm going to call it a wrap. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you all on the next video. Ciao for now. Owls. Ah, I can't keep it in focus now. Thank <laughs> you.